My name is Joshua Hiram Gray and I'm originally from uh, Rotorua. I'm 33 years old. I was in Obama. Um, <laughs> I did embalming for uh, about 10 years. My, my father was a funeral director, my grandfather and my great-grandfather, so it's generational. And um, when I finished high school, um, my father asked me if I was interested in, in working at the funeral home. And um, I started on the grounds, pretty much, um, doing the maintenance, the lawn mowing and all that kind of stuff. And then he asked me if I was interested in and embalming, so uh, I took that up. I was, but um, I, you know, I guess it was more curiosity. I, I did it for a few years, but it, it doesn't fulfill me. <laughs> to be honest, it doesn't. I don't really get into it. Um, I, I enjoy the whole process of being able to make the deceased look presentable for the loved one and then seeing the reaction from the loved one. Um, but other than that, um, it's not really me, to be honest. You know, I believe what, what you radiate out is what you get back. So whether it be negativity, if you're going to throw out negativity, that's exactly what will come back to you. Um, and if you um, throw out positivity, you attract positivity. It's like the, the, the law of the universe, I think. Anything that you throw out is exactly what you get back. And I think when bad things happen to us, it's character building and it's for a purpose and for a reason, to make us better people. Exactly, I don't, I don't think failure is losing, I think failure is giving up. That's for me, uh, if, you know, if, if you lose at something, then you, then you can go back and you can think, well, what can I do better that will help me improve for next time? I think a lot of our problems, especially in today's society, are first world problems. And you know, it's like, well, I've got no credit on my phone or, or things like that, where there's people out there who aren't, don't even have enough food to, to provide or sustain themselves. So. Um, so we're very blessed and, you know, even at my worst times in my life, I try and have that kind of, that, that kind of thinking because that's what kind of pulls you through and, and you, you tend to you think that you're not so bad off after all like some people are in this world. When my last relationship finished um, a couple of years ago, um, I decided to give up embalming and, and I wanted to do something that fulfilled me. Uh, not, not just for the money, but for the love, you know, for my heart, for my heart. So uh, for the last year and a half, I've been a full-time musician. Um, doing busking, gigging, concerts, recording, writing, um, and, and a, a bit of television stuff as well. So that's, at the end of the day, that's where my love is and my heart is, but unfortunately in this country, it's not sustainable. And the, the income is, you know, can have a lot one week and then have nothing the next week. So. Um, when I moved up here to be with my partner, I decided I wanted to find work that was sustainable. So I'm going back to full-time work. I'm working for the man. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. It will be for finances, but I know my heart is in my music. But I just know, like, like at the moment, it's it's not going to sustain what what I what I want in my life. I wanted to be a musician. Yeah, um, I've had a little taste of success with my music. 2003, I, I won um, the Best Vocalist for Battle of the Bands in New Zealand, so that was quite cool. Um, I won the New Zealand Country Music Entertainer of the Year in 94. Um, I've got to tour with, I'm not sure if you've heard of Eddie Lowe. He's a country music artist. I've um, done some stuff recently with Brendan Dugan and um, also performed um, alongside at a concert. Uh, well, I got nominated for a New Zealand, the up and coming New Zealand Country Music Artist of the Year this year and performed with Juice Newton. Alongside, I'm not sure if you've heard of Juice Newton. She sings it, just call me angel of the morning, darling, and queen of the hearts. And so I got to, put, and she's a Grammy award winning artist, so that was, that was quite a thrill for me. I'd love to travel a little bit more. I, I lived in Canada for a few years, in the States, and I've gone a, done, done some traveling in South America and, and Australia. But I think at the end of the day, you know, happiness is, is where it's at. Um, if people don't have happiness, there's, a sense of lost, you know, um, people are lost and so I, I want to be happy. I love songwriting, it's where my heart's at. 
uh, some of the songs, you know, it's amazing. I think it was John Lennon or Paul McCartney said that that music or writing a song is like getting bits of inspiration out of nowhere and putting them together. And uh, I love doing that. I love feeding off creativity. And the great thing is, you know, I, I've recorded some of my songs. I've got like 10 songs up on on a website called SoundCloud. Uh, you can go to Joshua Hiram Gray and check out my stuff on SoundCloud. And um, there's a one live recording, but the others are just studio recordings. And um, it's, it's neat to know that, you know, a lot of the songs, or every song that I write is, is a part of me and, and what I'm feeling and what's going on in my life situation at the time. So everything dies, everything has an end. Um, the trees, the, you know, the birds. <laughs> Um, but I don't know, like the death of a loved one, I lost my, my stepbrother when I was 14, he drowned, and that had a huge effect on me. Um, and I think losing somebody that you really care about and knowing that there's no way that you could see them again until probably after death, I believe in afterlife, um, it is, you know, it has a huge, huge effect on, on your own mortality. Um, I think the thing that's made me more wiser, especially working at a funeral home, is is knowing that, um, you know, we all get sick and we all pass on and our bodies are very fragile and um, we don't appreciate our health until we don't have it.